Hello, everyone, and welcome to the um, well. Welcome to my uh, uh, interview with. I, this has to be my favorite interview ever. Um, I've got Matt Hammett uh, here. Um, we're here to talk about the documentary Bowen's Heart, but. The reason um, this has got to be my favorite interview ever is I was just telling Matt, you know, this Sanctus Real was like my first concert ever way back in like 2006 um, on the We Need Each Other tour on, I think it was First Baptist uh, Raytown. Um, so it, it's just super exciting to have you here. It's, it's, um, it's, it's insane. So thank you so much. Oh, absolutely, man. Time. I'm glad um, to be here with you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, let's talk about the documentary. Um, uh, admittedly, I haven't been keeping up with uh, Bowen as much um, as um, as I used to, but I remember the beginnings of it. Um, back when you released, I believe it was, um, gosh, I, I think it was back in 2009, um, you released a song and I think a video documentary um, called, uh, oh shoot, I forget the name of the single. Um, but I think it was right. called All of Me, I think was yeah, the song. Yeah, All of Me. That's right, yeah. And I remember you talking about it a bit, but for those who aren't in the know, um, so um, what is Bowen's Heart about and what, what um, yeah, just brief people on what it's, what the documentary is about. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, 2010 is when all of me came out. Um, and that was my first solo release. Um, you know, previously I'd only released music with the band. The reason that album came out, um, solo was because it was how I really processed the news that we got that year, which was that, you know, Bowen, um, for those who are watching, who don't know, um, was diagnosed, at, while we were still pregnant with him, while well, my wife was pregnant, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, he was diagnosed with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So yeah. that means that he only had half of his heart. And so, you know, things were really complicated from the beginning with him. And it was really cool because so many people uh, heard our story on the radio and reached out to us and gave us so much support even before he was born. And then after he was born, that first year, there were two major open heart surgeries that he had. And, and then, you know, we actually waited almost eight years to have his third surgery, which a lot of kids have a little sooner than that. But we felt like after doing some, uh, you know, reading some how, how some other uh, patients had done, waiting longer in different programs, that maybe that was a good option for us. But the when we came around to making the decision to have Bowen's third surgery, we really thought a lot about all of the questions that we had gotten from other families who are going through similar things. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know how it would affect their marriage, how it would affect the other kids in their family. They wanted to know what it was going to be like going through it. And there's a, there's a term, you know, in the writing world show, don't tell. You can sure. tell somebody I'm struggling um, or you can, give a brief description of something you're thinking or feeling, but when you're willing to really paint the picture vulnerably in detail for somebody and show them, it just helps them experience it and know they're not alone. So we decided that going into that third surgery, that maybe we could show people what exactly it was like. I think our goal was uh, moving into it was how do we raise awareness for congenital heart disease in the community? And then how do we help other families who are going this, through a similar thing know that they're not alone? And lastly, I think we just really wanted to extend hope to people in that same kind of situation. So that was our goal in making the film. And I had no idea when we started what we were really getting ourselves into. <laughs> the process of filmmaking, as you know, is much more complicated than making a record. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You said... Um show don't tell and that's you know i i interviewed the sound editor for a movie called uh, sound of metal uh back oh, when cool. he back when he won the uh, oscar for that and he yeah. gave the, this super insightful answer um i wish i remembered it verbatim but uh i asked a question that was basically 
something along the lines of how do you, with such a film that relies on audio, how do you let people know, you know, how do you let people know that through the sound language, the language of sound and, um, and everything like that. And he just gave this answer that was just like, you know, you've got to be in the same mindset that Ruben's in. Um, so anyways, I, um, that was a cool film. Yeah. It's one of, it was one of my favorites that year. I, I think maybe the only other movie, uh, that year that took the cake for me was Wolf Walkers, which was made by, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking right now, but I saw it at right. AFI Fest 2020, and it was great. Uh, they're by cool. the people who, who did a lot of Irish movies. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, so you you had that eight year gap. Um, um, so what? Um, I guess you there. There's a lot here. Here we could cover. Um, so how did you even like start to dig into all, all this community um, that you previously weren't aware of? Yeah. It kind of felt like it came to us in a way just because of all the need, you know, that we had and the need that we saw, we started just, you know, it's like any other community, right? Like you find other people who are struggling with the same thing and you all gather around each other and you all comfort each other and help others who um, kind of find themselves uh, in, in the club, they didn't really want to be in to begin with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, but nonetheless, it's a community and it's people who, uh, you find such interesting bonds with and so many deep and vulnerable in real ways. And so, you know, I think the more we saw other families too struggling, you know, just being involved in, and we would even go do a uh, perform at fundraisers and we got really involved with um, doing things to help benefit different heart centers across the country for, for pediatric heart. And through that, it was just like, man, you just found out how wide this network of people are. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of kids uh, who diagnose with heart disease um, every year. And so it just, it's a, it's an ongoing need. And I, and I think it spans beyond that too, from the heart world into other chronic illness, because I think any family that watches a film like this uh, will know somebody that's been through something similar, or will they themselves have been through something, you know, difficult like this. And so I hope that it spans even beyond the heart world, you know, and its reach. Um, and, uh, you know, we've gotten such great feedback, man, from people who have, especially people who've been through similar stories, just saying, you know, I, I'd mentioned before that I hoped people would feel like they're not alone. Mm-hmm. And that's like probably the biggest feedback I've gotten on my Instagram and Facebook messages is, hey, we just watched this film. And it's so good to know that somebody else feels the same thing I do. And then a lot of those people are saying we've sent it to our families so they can understand what we go through. So that's really been cool to see that it's reaching people in that way. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, I think that's kind of the hope of, I, I, I think any documentary, I, because I was watching um, a documentary called hold your fire or something like that. Um, and, uh, or, or, I was watching, it was a day where I was watching a bunch of documentaries. Um, And one of the things I really had to wrestle with was, you know, what is the job of the documentary? What is it trying to do? Uh, Is it trying, because for the longest time, I would think, oh, it's there to document, which I I think this film really very well documents uh, a a very real possibility uh, uh, that something, uh, reality rather. Um, but it, also to learn, um, because, you know, half the documentaries I watch, I, I, I know nothing about until I go, hit play. So, um, yeah, it is definitely a teaching documentary, like you said, to bring awareness to people. And, you know, that's something that Zach and Lexi Reed, the mm-hmm. director producer team, um, really had a heart for, you know, they do a lot of 
stories similar to this and short documentary. Um, the story of how they ended up doing the film is actually really cool because, well, I mean, it, it's also got sad elements too. They actually lost a child, the heart disease. And so my wife knew that they had worked for NBC online and the Today Show doing short documentary work. So she actually reached out to Zach and Lexi and um, just said, hey, we want to do this documentary. Do you guys consider making it with us? And, you know, and they so graciously agreed to, they were actually looking for a way to go do a feature documentary um, because they were getting ready to kind of branch out from the network. And so it was perfect timing for them, perfect timing for us, but it was two families that really did have a heart, you know, to advocate for other families going through the same thing. And like you said, um, they, they really did such a good job from an objective point of view of uh, journaling the process. And I think Zach did a fabulous job. The edit, even just um, strategically placing the facts or the phone calls of the doctors that really painted a clear picture of exactly what it was that we were facing and that what these kids go through. So kudos to them, man. They, they crushed it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I could feel that kind of journalistic quality to it. Looking for, okay, what are the gaps I'm missing? Um, and providing, I think, uh, um, a kind of jumping off point to, to be like, okay, do your own research, uh, and maybe find something new. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah. Um, so you seek them out, uh, I, and so, or Sarah did. Um, so I guess, um, can you talk a little bit about, um, how, how the two of you kind of, went on this journey together um, because I, I'd, I'd be really interested to hear about that. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about me and Sarah or us, us in the reads. Uh, I, I actually either one, but mostly you and Sarah, uh, okay. because I think uh, that's kind of a unique twist to the documentary. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it is hard, you know, marriage for anybody is complicated, right? And now you've got uh, the grief and all the emotions that come with a sick child, you know, we're two individuals in this union, <laughs> um, trying to feel our own grief, but also learn how to grieve together. I would say in the early days, it was extremely difficult on our family. You know, it was trying to learn how to kind of process as one per se, but also do what we needed for ourselves. And sometimes what we needed for ourselves sometimes seemed to be at odds with how we could process together. Also, you're making a lot of big decisions, you know? So, you know, we might not always see eye to eye on the decisions that are made. And I would say in the very beginning years, um, gosh, it, it tore at us so much. And there was so much to navigate and there was so much grief. And it felt like at times we were like, I really understood how it is that people don't make it. But over the course of Bowen's life and then uh, those, those, you know, I guess almost eight years between those two surgeries and then um, moving into that final surgery um, or the third surgery may not be as final, but we hope it is. Uh, we kind of had grown up a little bit in that area. And those lessons had sharpened us. Those lessons had grown us in a maturity and moved us into a place where we could go into this third surgery and know how to grieve the way we needed to, but also be empathetic with each other and use that and grieve together. And we knew how we learn had learned some tools as to how it could make our family bonds stronger as opposed to make it feel like we were getting torn apart. And so, you know, that, that part of the journey probably is the most pronounced to me and definitely is one that I hope um, people see in the film that that was a big hope of ours that, that, that 
because there's so much um, divorce and families torn apart through chronic illness, that maybe we we could be an example of a family that has learned how to allow these things uh, to bring us together instead of tear us apart. And so I, I think we wanted other people to feel that hope that like, as hard as this is, maybe this is something that can, can do that for us too, you know, as they watch it. So um, hopefully that journey that me and Sarah have had together as parents <laughs> and 21 years of marriage um, can be an example of we're not perfect, but we're choosing, we're, we're choosing each other and we're choosing family and we're choosing uh, our faith um, and allowing it to bring us together, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, sorry, my AC kicked on. Um, all right. But, um, and my timer's going off, but um, <laughs> it's all right. I, I actually set an alarm so I could be uh, early for the interview. And ironically, <laughs> it's yeah. the timer that's going off in the middle of it. Um, no worries. But anyhow, um, yeah, I, I think I relate a lot to that grief that you talk about. Um, and I think it was one of the uh, things that really just drew me to kind of Bowen's story because uh, a few people know this, um, but um, back in 2014, I lost my dad to MS. Oh, wow. Um, and that was a tough time. Um, I, for the, gosh, for, from May to August, uh, the t- ironically enough, the touchstone is uh, graduation um, and then um, Guardians of the Galaxy co- coming out. <laughs> um, yeah. Because um, right after, like a week after graduation, uh, dad had passed Mm. and I was dealing with like the, um, the process of, oh my goodness. I like, I I had known for like a week because he had fell a week prior and I called one of my friends and I said, you know, um, it's, I've got a week with him, maybe. Um, Wow. And, um, but I was the one who found him. Um, I won't get into the details, uh, but, um, so it was a really tough time for me. And then, so I, that, I'll just say it's, it was a really tough time and, um, something that for Christians out there really for a while, started to mess with my faith like my main question to god a long for a long time was how could you let this happen yeah and but you know i've come to terms with it um probably not in the same way you uh you have because uh i I think grief is different from uh for every person um but um, but yeah, it, it just took me a long time to find my way back after that. Mm. Um, I think two years, I want to say, uh, two or three years. Um, yeah. so yeah, definitely, uh, grief is, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, so I think that's what kind of in a morbid way drew me towards the story of Bo- Bowen and that there was just an honestness about grief that yeah. I, I think is not talked about a lot. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm first of all, I'm sorry for your loss, man. That's Thanks. It's difficult. Yeah. It's, it is, uh, you know, it's important for, for us to be vulnerable about those things. You know, it's how we connect with people. I think even for your audience, I think it's really important for some of them to even hear that, you know, for those that didn't know, I think that, you know, it, it's the, the common strand that connects us is vulner- that vulnerability. Nobody ever felt closer to somebody because they saw their Instagram highlight reel, <laughs> 
You know, no, it's like, no, they haven't. It's like, but you always feel closer to somebody or bond with somebody. There's a sense of like, okay, I'm not, I'm not otherly or I'm not alone or isolated. You know, that you, so much is illuminated with honesty and vulnerability and the real thing. And that was really important to us with making this film was how do we show a, a very honest portrait of, you know, there, there's a lot of things like we could have kind of edited out, you know, but we like wanted to make sure some of those moments that almost felt too personal or too real uh, still stayed in there. Even if they were just moments, you know, that were like, because people had to go, Oh, like this isn't just an act like this is actually happening in real time, you know? And so it will one of actually funny. One of the funny things about um, there's a scene in the movie where we're, Sarah's doing an interview and Bowen calls her from a friend's party crying because he wants to come home. And Sarah's brother thought that we like staged it because it seemed too like too real. <laughs> he was like, there's no way that happened while yeah. we were in the interview. And we were like, no, that that happened. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's uh it, but it was important for us to be able even for Bowen, you know, there were times where it was like, oh man, you know, crying in the movie. I look like a real wuss, you know. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, you went through heart surgery. And overall, he's he's fine. You know, we really did have to ask our kids too when they watched it, like, are you okay with everything here? Is there anything, you know, because we care about their privacy too? Like, is there anything you need us to take out? Anything you need us to change? And we let them have their say along the way too, just because it's their story as well, you know, but they were also very gracious in allowing um, some of those things to stay that were real personal. So grateful to the whole family for that. Yeah. And I think, I, I think it's that honestness that really helps, um, really helps the film a, a, a ton because I think, if that had been edited out that little moment that, that um, you talked about, I think it would have come off as, Oh, we want to hide away the, the, these parts of ourselves. Um, yeah. And I think what's important, uh, at least here um, is to not hide away because I think that's the inclination we all have is like, Oh, like for me, I'll, I'll, I'll just say like, um, the inclination to hide away online because it's like, oh, once you become that public person, it's like, uh, but I don't want to let them know that. So anyhow, um, yeah, it's like, I want to be honest, but how honest do I want to be? Right. Right. It's that filter, that gap. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I really appreciated that this documentary, Matt, I, it, it, it's one of those ones that come around and, and, you know, um, I watch a lot of documentaries, but I, I thought this was really, really well put together. Um, and, and maybe it's just the writer in me saying that. Um, but it, it's, I like that you learn from it. Um, and, and instead it, you're left with something that's like, okay, let me jump off and, do my own research about this, um, you know, the, uh, condition Bowen has, I, I forget, um, off the top of my head, but, Sorry. um, yeah, we just, we say HLHS. Yeah. HLHS. Okay. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a doozy mm. the name. <laughs> yeah. The first time I heard it, I was like, I was like, okay, wait, hold on one more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, Matt, uh thank you so much for joining me i i can't believe um i got the opportunity to talk to you i'm still um i still can't believe it um awesome man like the if i on mine bro like if i never get to do it another interview i'm good um <laughs> i mean sure i've done oscars interview that that was a good one but no this is this is this has been great, really. Awesome. Well, Austin, you're a, you're a, you're a good guy, man, and I appreciate you being vulnerable with me too. And 
yeah. sharing with your audience some of the things you went through with your dad. I know that I know that's going to touch somebody on this interview. Yeah, I, I sure hope so. Um, oh, man. But thank you so so much for taking time. I mean, I, we've rescheduled, gosh, twice. So yeah, um, <laughs> sorry about that. One of them was my fault. <laughs> no, I I know. Uh, I I think Rachel said. Um, um, oh. Thanks again to Matt Hammett for joining me on this interview. I know he didn't have to, and we were scheduled a couple times, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I I was uh, super excited to have to interview him. It, it was great, um, and I hope he got the same enjoyment I did at, 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 out of that. Um, so you can watch uh, Bowen's Heart on. You can rent it um, by. Uh, going to Prime Video and anywhere you rent or buy movies. But if you want to stream the movie, um, you can stream it on Tubi, which is free. Um, you can just go to their website. Uh, I'll include all the links down in the description, as well as a link to the guide doc that um, kind of gives you some more resources for uh, uh, the film. So uh, with that said, uh, I just want to say, uh, again... Uh, to Matt, thank you again. Um, and uh, if you like hearing my interviews and want to get them early, uh, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Austin B Media. Uh, $1 gets you uh, 24 hour early access um, and movie commentaries at no extra charge, as well as TV episode com commentaries at no extra charge. Um, podcast a day early uh and a whole bunch of other stuff just for one dollar a month and and now you can do it annually so that's a big plus um so, and I, you, I believe you get a 10 percent discount on that uh if you do it annually versus month month to month um let's see what else um if you don't, don't like to do patreon uh you can also just do a one-time donation to me um to help keep the lights on uh no obligation uh, and then let's see, uh, you can buy me a coffee, five bucks per coffee. So until next time.